Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. This is the fast shell stitch for a crochet dishcloth. You're going to notice that this goes really quick. There are two different colors that are here. It's the printer that's not doing it right. Here's my little sample that I have. And so the way that this is working is that the shells are interlocking to create this up and down motion that you see. And the yarn is being carried on the side that will have a border within the project itself. Let's get started right away. I'm not going to figure out what the stitch multiples are for this because it's just a little dishcloth like so. And you'll notice that it goes pretty quick. So I'll cover the basis and then we'll also cover the border today. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hooked and you'll need 100% cotton. Remember to use 100% cotton for all your dishcloth needs, whether it's Lily Sugar and Cream, Bernat Handicraft, or Peaches and Cream, Creme de la Creme. Uh, make sure it's 100% cotton because acrylic will literally mold out on you. So let's begin this process now. On page number two, if you'd like to follow the crochet diagram, you can see that it's a repeat of just two rows over and over and over, and this is exactly what we're going to do today. Let's begin. Let's start off with a slip knot, and you just need to chain a total of 26. So one, two, three, four, five, go all the way to 26, and meet me back here in just a moment. Let's begin row number one, and we're going to start off by just going second chain from the hook, so just right here, and just single crochet into the back hump of the chain. If you prefer to do the regular uh, stitch into the chain, you can decide to do that. So I always like to go in the back hump, it's a personal preference. You're now going to skip two chains, so one and two, and go to the third, which is right here, and you are applying five double crochets into that same stitch. So we'll count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And now we're gonna scoot on across. So we're gonna skip two chains, so one and two, go to the third and apply one single crochet. So there's going to be one single crochet in between each one of the shells that you'll run into. So to repeat this, skip two on the chain, go to the third and put in five double crochet. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then you'll skip two chain, one and two, go to the third and single crochet. Please repeat this across and I'll see you at the end of the row. This is still row number one. So I'm coming across, I have my shell work, I'm going to skip the next two and the very last chain will be a single crochet. So please do that. And that will conclude row number one and you now have everything set up so that you can do the rest of this really quite easily. Let's turn our work and we're going to keep this color and move on to row number two. So whenever you're on a single crochet as the ending, the beginning of the next row is always going to be the same and it will always be chain three. And then in the same stitch, just follow it straight on down, is going to be two more double crochet. So on the ends here, you're going to have a half of a shell. You're then going to go to the middle stitch of the group of five that you see, just come there and just single crochet in and that will pull that half shell over and now you're going to do a full shell and you're going to concentrate only on the single crochets that are between the shells and so it's the same number it'll be five double crochet in each of those single crochet between the shells this is two three four and five. So then you're on the top of the shell now, you'll go to the middle one, so just you can count it to the third, or just look for it, and just single crochet in, and then you're gonna sink into the single crochet between the two shells, and put in five double crochet. So do this across, and I'll meet you at the end of the row in a moment. This is row number two. I'm coming close to the other side, so I've just got a shell here, so I'm gonna single crochet into the top of this shell, and we've got to concentrate on the very last single crochet and you're only going to put in three double crochets so it's only going to be a half shell so you started off with a half shell on this row and you will finish off with a half shell on this row so i want you to stop and not pull through 
the final two loops and I want you to grab a secondary color and we're going to use that secondary color for going across and back for the next section. So whatever color you decided to do, create a slip knot first so that you have a nice solid join and then put it onto your hook and finish. And now you're going to turn your work. You're going to let the other yarn just hang off to the side. So you're not going to get rid of it. You're just going to let it hold and we are going to start rows number three and four next. So in row number three, I'm on the top of the last double crochet. So when there's a double crochet below, you're just going to chain one and you'll single crochet into the top of that double crochet. Okay. And what you can do, what I would probably recommend before you do that, just put this on top. This is a straggler. It's the only time you'll see it. And you could just uh, put it into there first, capture it underneath, and then just toss it to the side and then you can hide that later. Now, you're going to come into the single crochet that is between the two. Because of the way that it's kind of coming down like this, it's not so obvious, so just push it up so you can see it. But this is the single crochet, and you're gonna have a full shell there, and that will be the five double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're gonna come into the middle one of the grouping of the next five, single crochet in first. And then you are going to apply another five into the single crochet. So it's like what you already know from the past. So you're just sinking in these shells into the single crochets that rest in between the existing shells from the row below. And what's holding them stable is the single crochets that are in the middle one of there. So please go across and I'll see you at the end of this row. Coming across and this is the um, chain three that you built up on. So don't go into a space, go right into the top of the chain and you're going to put in a single crochet there. So you started off with a single crochet on this side, then you did your shells, so you'll finish off with a single crochet on this side. You, your, your other yarn is sitting here on the other side waiting for you to come back. So this means that you just have to automatically turn and go back with the same color. So you're currently in the single crochet, so you're just gonna chain three and double crochet two more times into that single crochet. So you're doing a half a shell. So every other row, you're either starting off with a single crochet or you're starting off with a half shell. So the middle one of the grouping of five, single crochet in, and then you're coming to the single crochet that is resting in between and putting in your full shell. And you'll do that all the way across like you already know how to do. Okay, so go all the way to the end of the row and then I'll just quickly show you how to change the yarn back. And you're not getting rid of this yarn, you'll let it rest and then we'll move on to the border after that. So when you get to the other side, you start it off with a half shell. So you'll finish off with a half shell. So in the last single crochet, you'll put in your three double crochet, but on the very last one, you gotta get prepared to change your yarn back to where you're, you were doing the other color. So once the final two are on here, let this just hold out of the way. And you were just gonna grab the other yarn that's just kind of holding there, just tighten things back up and just have it taut, okay? And pull through and therefore that yarn will be then ready to go to start again. So you're just gonna turn your work and begin. You're on the top of a double crochet. So what does that mean? It means that you'll chain one single crochet in the top of that one and then you'll start with your shells in the single crochets and etc. So you're just gonna go back and forth using the two colors and then you'll end up with a bigger sample like this. And they're asking you to continue to do rows number three and four, which is essentially what we're doing that you see. And they want you to get to seven and a half inches ending on the fourth row. And then it says to fasten off and then we're gonna do a border. So I'll show you how to do the border next. So let's do a border. So you'll attach it to the side that you're going to start on and you would want to uh, secure in all your loose ends before you do the border but all you're just going to do is just start off in a corner and the corners will uh, will always be the same it'll be three single crochets into a corner so you can just put in three so that will allow it to turn and then you're just going to blaze across and you're just going to put one single crochet in each 
The trick is, is the sides. You just have to equally space out what those are. And um, I will show you there. So I'll get to the end of this across and then I'll turn with you on camera and then I'll just show you how to evenly space and just guess it from here. There's nothing else to do to this border other than this. It helps uh, stabilize everything for you. And uh, so the counts are really not important as long as it's not ruffling out or buckling. When you get to a corner, you're just going to put in three single crochets like I started with before. And now you're just gonna equally space out your stitches going down. So don't go into a space, go into like a chain work. It'll hold it better. And then just continually just equally space it down. Now I have um, skills with this, but do you see how the, the distance between each one of these stitches are when it's a regular stitch? Just kind of eye it up and try to get the same distance apart from each other like you're seeing on the tops. Um, and then when you get to the bottom, it's when you turn your work, you'll have your stitch work in order to play with that one. Okay, so you're just gonna equally space, and then when you get to the bottom, you're gonna turn the corner, and the corner is what? Hopefully you said three single crochets. So when you get to a corner, which it'll be right here, just put in three single crochets. So we have one, two, and three and then you're gonna blaze across. Now, do you remember how many uh, chain spaces you skipped? It was two. So just go right into the chain work itself. And so you have two there, and then you'll have one at the base of each one of the shells. Okay, so you're gonna do that, and then I'm gonna meet you over here and show you how to cover in over top of the yarns that we carried, and I'll see you there in a moment. So I'm coming close to the other side, and I've just passed the shell. And you remember that there is a single crochet that is on the end of the row. So the, so the single crochet would have the three single crochets in it. So we have one, two, and three. Now, when you go down the side of this, any of those loose ends, or sorry, any of the yarns that you carried, you just wanna make sure that they trap underneath this. So if you're using similar colors to what you did, it's really quite easy to hide. But so anyway, these yarns that are being carried, you just wanna, when you scoop in, scoop in so that it stays inside the stitch itself. So don't go around them uh, in the sense of missing them. So going in and it will trap it underneath of the border. So it's a good way to do that. And you see this on blankets too, uh, when they have you not changing colors and it just saves you a lot of time from cutting and all that. So you can see that when you turn it over, this is just the loose end that we started with, but um, the other yarns that have been carried are stuck inside. When you get to the end, you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that you started with. And then you're going to use a tapestry needle to hide in any loose ends. If you are using this and more, um, and not just decorative, um, I'd recommend that you do uh, take your time and just make sure that you weave in your tails. To weave in the tails, let me demonstrate. So cut it long enough so you can do that. So I have a lot of tails to weave in at this moment, but let's just concentrate on this one. So turn it to the back side of whatever the border was. So just turn it around, put it through a tapestry needle, and just glide it through the stitch work itself of just the border because it's, in my case, it's a different color, so it's impossible to hide uh, if you go through another color. So going back, across, and when you pull it, don't change the shape, and then you're gonna go through a slightly different direction. Now, just don't go between the uh, strands. Actually separate plies out as well, because then that will really help it get stuck in there, especially if you're using and scrubbing your dishes and etc. Okay, and then go back in the opposite direction. So you wanna go back at least three times, uh, back and forth at least three times, and then you can safely cut it down. And that loose end will never show up. But it's a really neat idea, and this here would be the fast crochet shells, and it's a really great example of another free pattern by yarnspirations.com. We hope you have a good one, and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.